so I got this off of eBay. Um, it is a, a Yagi antenna. It came with some paperwork. And it's on a PC board, so I thought it'd be fun to play with. Uh, so it's uh, a dipole, three directors, and one reflector. Reflectors on the back slide. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so this was uh, made by WA5VJB. Um, and it is uh, a 2.4 to 2.45 megahertz 5 element. PC board Yagi. Uh, good for Wi-Fi and things like that. It's got an interesting, uh, interesting construction that we'll talk about. He actually provided some uh, VNA data, uh, at least uh, S11. And um, let's see here. Yeah, he's got some markers at um, various points. I'll just let you let you stare at that. But I guess the place where it's supposed to work, it's got a 25 dB return loss. So that's um, that seems to be very nice. So we'll see if we can't reproduce his uh, reproduce his thing here. So let's talk about his uh, let's talk about his PC board. Um, well, let's see here. Let me back up. Let's talk about Yagi's first. Yeah, let's talk about Yagi's first. So, what is a Yagi antenna? Well, here's a Yagi antenna. First of all, it has a dipole. So if you ignore these parts, okay, you see a little split there? That's a dipole. So you have a dipole antenna. We all know how those work. And the first thing you do is you put a ground plane next to it. So this is, a, this is connected to ground. And so a dipole over a ground plane, uh, depending on the distance between these two, will give you a radiation of... Um, the RF energy in lobes, okay? Generally, a uh, dipole antenna kind of makes a donut, but if it's in proximity to a ground, you can get it to do, uh, you can get it to kind of do a, uh, a thing that looks kind of like a this, or a thing that looks like a this. You can get it to do different things. You can get it to have little side lobes down here. You can get it to do all sorts of different shapes depending on these distances here. So with this particular design, what you want to do is you want to try to make it so there's one big lobe going in the uh, in the forward in the forward direction. So you adjust this so that you're kind of getting things kind of going that away. So that's what the reflector does. Now these things are called directors, and they direct the energy. So um, the dipole has a certain impedance and free space has a certain impedance. and the Radio waves really don't want to go into free space. That It's kind of a resistance for them to go that direction. And so if you give them something better to latch onto, they will. So as this uh, dipole radiates and starts coming in proximity with the ground, it starts producing a field. And the field sees an easier path, a lower resistance. And it will kind of hang onto here. So you might have kind of a, kind of a, a wave here and then... Uh, you can say, oh yeah, well I can kind of, I can kind of reproduce myself over here, and oh here's another one, I can do it again, and and you kind of coax it in one direction, and you can add more and more elements. You can add you know 13 whatever elements to this thing if if you want to kind of get it to go in the same direction. So you're coaxing it, coaxing it in one direction. So these are all the, uh, all the directors. So, so um, take a look at what he's done here. He has one big reflector. He has a dipole, which is weird looking, so ignore that for now. He has a dipole, and then he has these directors, okay? And they're not evenly spaced, so there's some theory in that as well. Um, but yeah, let's... Um, and now that we kind of understand that, okay, uh, how does the connection, how is the connection made to the board? Uh, well, the uh, coax, I think there's a picture of it on it how to do it. I wasn't on this page. But there's, um, oh yeah, it's right here. I'm sorry. So you solder the braid of the coax to this to this piece right here. You solder it to that little square right there. So that's where your ground goes. And then there's this little wire here and you sign, you solder the, uh, the end of your coax onto that. Alright, so let's talk about that. So here's a dipole, 
And normally you would hook a dipole up like this. You'd have your coax coming in, the center conductor would, would run one, one half of the dipole, and then the ground would run the other half of the dipole, and the, uh, the fields can kind of, uh, kind of do this type of thing, right? Okay. And um, you're kind of making this ground, but the end is kind of out in the open, so you can kind of set up a field on it. Uh, this end can be a different voltage, different f field strength than, than this. But it's kind of always kind of, kind of uh, zero here in the center, okay? So kind of remember that, that this is... I think people kind of know this about antennas, is if you go right, reach and you grab one, there can be high voltages out here, um, but there's kind of low voltages in here, okay? Well, the way that this is done is the ground is connected to this half, just like it was in this one, but the little centerpiece takes this weird path to get over to this one. And if you just ignore this, you have a dipole, right? You have the center doing that part of it, and you have the ground doing that part of it, okay? And um, it doesn't hurt so much to put that in there because it just reflects here at this corner and comes back, and you can still sort of get, uh, you can sort of still get waves. I didn't draw that very good, did I? Sorry, let's try that again. You can still sort of get waves that do this, this type of thing, right? There'll still be higher voltages out here, lower voltages in here, and higher voltages back out there. So it's just a weird way of, of making a dipole. Um, I don't know if there's a big difference in these two, really, uh, but they should work kind of functionally equivalent. All right. So in his, he brings his coax in here at the bottom, so he has this coax. He's going to connect the coax here and here. Okay, this is the coax. And so this little center goes to here, and then this will just kind of act as just a do-nothing because it's going in the same direction. And uh, so it just kind of comes over. It's just so that you, can, you don't have to have the coax come in on top of the board and kind of occlude other things. You just set it in the back here, and then this little, call it a transmission line or whatever, kind of goes out and then, and then goes here. Now, right here in the center of this, quote, dipole is a connection to ground. So let's take a look at that. This is in all the way, yeah. So we're going to connect ground to that pad. We're going to connect our center coax to that pad. It's going to go on its merry way, but if you look right there... Can you, can you see that? Are you focused? If you look right there, there's a via. And that via goes down over here where there's ground. Remember, ground's coming in here. This is that big ground uh, reflector. And then there's an extra little piece here that's still ground and it reaches in. And it locks onto the center part of that dipole and forces it to ground. So it, it, it is a bit strange. Um, he put the... Uh, reflector on the back side because you can't get in the way of this trace okay but it's not a very thick board compared to the wavelength that's operating at so uh, you just kind of uh, maybe I can just shine a light through the bottom there we go and you can just sort of see that uh, we have a uh, one two three a dipole and then behind there Behind there is the, uh, oops, it's probably not working well. Behind, behind there is the, is the reflector. Okay. Um, now, one of the things I don't like about the board is he put text here, and it's not silkscreen text. It's metalized text. If it was silkscreen, hey, fine. But he decided to make it metal, and that's in the path of the electrons. And, yeah, I'm not too crazy about that. I wish that was silkscreen. Um, and so I might measure this and then grind those off and measure it again, see if things change. Um, yeah, I don't like that. The other thing I don't like is the symmetry of this dipole. It's actually not the same length on both ends. He's got, 
I don't know. It just doesn't look right to me. Uh, I think that could be improved. It, it, it's it's kind of short on this end. Usually, directors are shorter than the uh, shorter than the dipole. This one's longer. The reflector's always a bit longer. And then I think I think rule of thumb I think it's like five percent longer for the reflector, and then like five percent in for the director. Um, and if you take a look at uh, his. Uh, it just, it's not the right length. It's just, it's not the right length. Um, the, uh, let's see if I can explain this better. Let me get a ruler out here. If I bring a ruler in, uh, from the side and I keep it parallel to the edge of the PC board, okay, uh, you can see that there's a, a little gap there and this is a little bit shorter than the director. That's just doesn't seem right to me. So anyway, uh, a couple of things about the boards I don't like about them, uh, but yeah, they probably work anyway because uh, RF doesn't care too much most of the time. I might change the radiation pattern a bit and stuff, but he still has a few directors and it probably all, all goes out in the wash. But uh, yeah, let's put this thing up and measure it. Okay, you can see here that I've uh, soldered the uh, coax onto the PC board. And I have the, uh, uh, turn it on here. I have the uh, antenna connected up to the Nano VNA. I calibrated the Nano VNA. And uh, I have a, uh, sweep here, oops. Let me change the uh, scale. Display scale, but we'll do five like they had in their picture. Um, and you can see that it has this dip here. And we can move the uh, cursor over to 2.4, which is right about there. There's two, there's 2.4. Let me zoom down on you for you guys. Okay. Um, so I found out that it was quite sensitive to what it's pointing at in the garage. Uh, there's a lot of metal around in here. So uh, uh, I took it outside and pointed it up to the sky. So that is my anechoic chamber. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see that it just it doesn't quite match the performance. He had minus 25 dB. I'm getting like minus 15, but at best maybe minus 20. So I'm not getting the data that he's got. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Yeah, see his graphs, oops, zoom back out. His graphs are going way lower than me. I, I'm measuring up in here and he's measuring way down in here. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if these are actual measurements or these are design measurements or uh, it says one SA view, two SA, that's spectrum analyzer. Maybe uh, resolution bandwidth, 30 kilohertz, video bandwidth, 100, sweep. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how he made these measurements. Uh, they don't look exactly like VNA measurements. They might be some type of, uh, he had a return loss bridge and it was using a return loss bridge or something, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is what the Nano is saying. I'm going to go ahead and grind those, uh, I'm going to grind those letters off just, just for grins. I want to see if it really does anything. All right, I, here I should show you. <laughs> I obliterated the uh, I obliterated the lettering on the uh, on the PC board, and we'll see if it. Uh, I doubt that it's going to make any difference. That's my guess, but you never know. You never know. Uh, let's see. Let me point it this direction, and let's zoom down here a bit. Ah, uh, I don't know. It might be a little better. I don't know. It might be a little bit better. Let me, uh, let me take it back outside. I don't know. What do you think? It might have gotten rid of that bump right around uh, 2.1 uh, gigahertz. Might have gotten rid of that bump. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, antennas are weird. 
And this one certainly doesn't match up to the data that I was given. Uh, it does seem like it's okay. You know, minus 15 uh, return loss, eh, not too bad. All right, well, that's enough for this video. So yeah, I get SWR around 1.5, something like that, 1.4 maybe, best of days. Um, yeah, not a bad antenna and uh, probably pretty directional because of the Yagi design. Uh, I don't think it's a favorite of mine. I've got some others coming in the mail, so uh, yeah, we'll give those a go, give those a go too.